All right, welcome to another Facebook Live. We are at April, crazy. April, my wife's birthday is in April, so it's a big month. And my twins are born in April as well, so an even bigger month. And a lot of the people are born in April, I'm sure. So huge month, right? Um, I'm thinking we're gonna talk today about something called food psychiatry, all right? So food is a big, big deal. Food is uh, information. It is one of the most common information sources we get uh, day to day. The average person's going to eat something at least three times a day, if not four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times during the day. So food is a big, 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 big deal. Um, many of us are going about life and we're thinking, you know what? I'm going to kind of change my food up later on. Maybe I'll start eating better later on. Uh, you know, food isn't that big a deal. I would rather just eat what I like, do the things that are convenient, and I'll get around to changing my food strategy later on. I'm here to tell you, really bad idea. Uh, if you want to feel amazing, if you want to feel awesome, if you want to be way beyond dysfunction, disease, um, you know, mitigating any of that opportunity in your life, then, or my life, we want to hit food. We want to make food happen for us. We want food to be an, be an enabler of our health instead of a disabler, all right? Um, please consider what is going in on a regular basis to your mouth, if it is a real food or if it is a pseudo food. If we go by the packaging on food items, if we say, you know, oh, that says natural, energy, um, life, if it says those kind of things on foods, then don't get it because you don't usually have to put those things on food. Do you see that on an apple, on a piece of broccoli, on um, carrots, on cauliflower, on a uh, steak? We don't usually see those words, right? Because we already know that those are real, natural, whole food substances. So food psychiatry is what we're talking about. Food has a massive effect on our mood, on our well-being, on how we think, on our ability to think, on our cognition, um, on our sleep patterns. Um, on how our relationships. I mean, literally, food, there are people walking around day after day who are in dysfunction relationally, that um, are hating their jobs, that don't want to get up in the morning, that um, are just slugging through day after day, uh, that are having you know, all kinds of marital distress, can't handle their kids, feel like kids are just overwhelming, or have crazy kids, all because of this four letter word called food. F-O-O-D. So, and there are other people who are seemingly crushing it in life, who seem to be stress-free, who are in the same exact situation as another person and are having no issues whatsoever seemingly to get through the, the situation. Um, and potentially their, their F-O-O-D, this four-letter word food, um, is a little different, is, um, is um, made up of, uh, the foods they eat are made up of, of real living, life-giving food substance. There's this interesting study done on uh, people who eat a traditional Japanese diet and those who eat a traditional Mediterranean diet and then those who eat a standard American diet. And one thing these re researchers found is that there is a 35% increased uh, likelihood of depression in people who are in the exact same environment but yet are eating a standard American diet versus the standard Japanese diet or a standard um, a tr traditional Japanese diet or a traditional Mediterranean diet. Um, that is literally just food, which many of you may have heard of this, the neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin is commonly used in antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications. Uh, you know, people run for this 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 uh, medication to help solve all their problems. Um, when reality, I would highly suggest first running to food, find food, allow food to um, be the instigator of those feelings of well-being. Because if the deal is, there are 95% of serotonin for our body is produced by bacteria in our digestive system. One single meal can change the expression and variety of bacteria we have in our digestive system. So some people think that, um, say they eat a donut or um, a Costco cake 
or a bunch of candy or some bunch of crackers or chips or those kind of things. They think, ah, oh, man, I'm having these, this blood sugar high or I'm having low blood sugar now. Um, you know, and that's, uh, that's all it is. And that's why they're moody or they're, they're feeling off or they can't think now. Um, the reality is it, for most people, it has very little to do with the blood sugar. And what it has to do with the fact that you changed or I changed by the food we ingested, we changed our neurochemistry. We changed the types of neurotransmitters being available, being produced by our gut bacteria. We changed what's actually flooding into our brain to enable us to maintain our mood, maintain our cognition, maintain our sharp thinking, uh, maintain how we relate in a, a happy, um, gentle manner to uh, our, uh, uh, our husband or wife or our kids. Um, food. It's all food. It's literally changing how our bo- how our body produces these neurotransmitters. So, amongst many many patients over the years, I have literally seen marriages that are being crushed simply because people are not taking care of themselves on the food front, like a husband or a wife is not taking care of themselves on the food front, and they feel terrible all the time, and so that they they end up. Um, you know, basically making their, their partner feel terrible um, because they can't control their emotions. And it literally, if, if they, we could actually get them to, or I could get them or um, somehow motivate, inspire them to just literally put wholesome, real living food into their body, their neurochemistry would change. And it wouldn't be that they need an antidepressant. It wouldn't be that they need, you know, all these supplements. It wouldn't be that they need um, more GABA and more, um, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy and, neurofeedback and biofeedback to, you know, or hormone therapy to get their, them right would be just that they need the right information going in on a daily basis from the food they're intaking. Because if we, there's, um, I'm sure you've all heard um, the phrase that um, you are what you eat. It's very cliche, I know, <laughs> but it, it is the truth. In fact, even back there's um, books and pamphlets in the 1800s where there, where this phrase, you are what you eat was being Displayed, and then in 1942, there's actually a book written called "You Are What You Eat." Um, but yet, as you can see, and many of you know, and maybe even your own life or your family's life or friends, you can see that we are not quite grasping the fact that truly, this this is a truth that we are what we eat, and we are becoming more and more and more what we eat, um, and the uh, opportunity for us to be um, the thing we don't want to become is becoming easier um, and easier and more convenient um, with each passing year because there's more and more processed food um, available to us. That's becoming more and more convenient. We're being told that we need to do life faster and faster and faster. We need to be involved in more and more and more things. We need to make sure that you know we can take our kid to 14 different things each day um, you know, so they can experience all of life. And uh, that leads us to fast food, to um, you know, eating just bars as our main form of food all the time, not actually sitting down and eating meals. Um, not We don't have time to prepare meals anymore, or so we think, um, because we're being driven by this societal notion that we need to go do everything all the time, go to every event, be at every, um, you know, uh, or have our kids involved in every little thing, um, when in reality we don't. We have the choice, free choice. Everybody will be fine, whether they're involved or not in all these things. <laughs> um, we we need to, um, and it's not need to, but it is desirable for us, um, for the, the state of our own health, the state of our family's health, the state of our children's health, um, and the uh, um, opportunity for the United States of America to have any kind of health system whatsoever to step back and say, you know what, is the food I'm putting in my body going to supply my body with the outcome I desire? Is this food going to help me be a better mother or father by allowing me to be more patient with my children? Or is it gonna make it so that I have brain fog and it's, it's hard for me to um, uh, relate or um, take care of you know two kids t- asking me something at the same time because I have brain fog and it's hard for me to make decisions now because I've been eating you know crackers and chips and uh, you know, bars and, um, soda pop and, uh, you know, bread for breakfast, lunch and dinner, um, because I don't have time and that's just the easy thing to grab. So 
I want this to be a, um, a kind reminder that food is a potent, powerful agent. It's not just this benign thing over here. It literally is putting information in your body. Every time we intake food, we're putting information in our body, telling our body how we want it to respond. If it's in, if you, I, I just, it's just, just disturbing. It's very disturbing to me. The number of people and patients and, um, individuals I run into in life who are, um, currently in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, um, living in a state of, um, I would say utter dysfunction and just slugging away and barely making it, um, and having relationships fall flat all over the place, having families disrupted, um, running into crazy diseases and they're not able to see that for the last 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, um, they've been putting in information that is incongruent with a life of, uh, excellence, a life that's, that's loaded with health and vitality and vigor. Um, they've been putting in information that is promoting this basically desire to just retire from life and, and just kind of give up on life and just, you know, I just want to retire. I hate, I have heard this so many times, but I, I'm tired of it. I wish I wasn't hearing it, but I just want to retire and, um, basically I, you know, I don't have to get up every day and go to work and do this thing and, you know, just be able just to relax and have you know, time that, that is my own. Um, I think this is really, really, really unfortunate because um, it doesn't have to be that way at all. And it's not that we need some special uh, concoction or some special new supplement or some special drug or special um, exercise program or, you know, this special accountability partner. It has to do with the fact that we're putting in information that, like I said, is incongruent with the lifestyle we desire. Um, and that unfortunately that information that we're putting in, it has to be consistent. It has to be over and over and over and over and over and over and over again to, uh, promote health and vitality and vigor. Um, you know, even the desire to go out and hang out with people, um, or, find, you know, instead I just rather just, um, be by myself all the time. Um, maybe, um, but, uh, if there's any area of life that you think, man, it's just not quite as good as I think it should be. Um, or could be, or I've always kind of wanted to, you know, feel like this, you know, this better way. I would look at the food you're ingesting and say, is this food, um, is the food I eat for breakfast, I eat for lunch, I eat for dinner, the snacks I have during the day, are those actually promoting the outcome I want? Are they actually enabling me to think more clearly? Are they enabling me to, um, you know, build muscle tissue? Are they enabling me to maintain my bone mass? Are they, um, you know, beneficial for my heart? Uh, if you have any questions about these particular foods that you're ingesting on a regular basis and you're wondering, you know, I really don't know. I'm not sure if this is helping me or hindering me. Um, please feel free to put it in the comments and I will let you know, um, yes or no. Um, and even give you an explanation if you, if you like, um, if that food substance is hindering or harming. I think most of us know though that, um, Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, you know, grass-fed, free-range meats, eggs, um, whole raw dairy products, organic, um, you know, whole grains, these kind of things. These are foods that will engender health. They're real food. They're whole food, um, as opposed to pastries, you know, a lot of pastas, uh, just any, any refi refined grain, um, white rices, and... Uh, candy, um, cakes and popsicles that are not made of real food, soda pops, you know, these kind of things are not, are not helping us out. Amazingly enough though, you know, people are, are living off every day and, and even people are living off of like crackers and chips. It's like if we have, these things just are not, these are not real food. So if we have them every single day, they are going to mold our life. If we don't have them every single day, then it won't be that big a deal. Maybe every, uh, you know, you have a couple times a month just as a, you know, just this thing as opposed to an everyday thing because everyday things mount up. You know, if you do something every day for a year, that's 365 times, right? If you do that same thing, you know, for three years, you've done over a thousand times. Um, and that just, it, that's going to make a difference. It's just like if you smoked one cigarette a day for, that'd be 365 cigarettes. You smoke, I mean, that, that's going to make a difference. Food is no different. Food is going to make a difference. Um, Jasmine rice. Yeah. Jasmine rice is good. 
nothing wrong with jasmine rice. Um, it's a whole food substance, right? The um, make sure I didn't miss any of the cool stuff I want to tell you guys about. Um, I told you about the Japanese study. The um, yeah, I was talking about uh, you know people in their their they don't like their jobs, they don't like their marriages, they don't like all these things. When in reality, I've seen so many people who change their diet, and all of a sudden they like they don't mind their job anymore, or they um, change their diet. And you know what? They feel like they can handle being a mom now. Or they change their diet and they think, you know what? It's crazy, but my marriage is so much better now. Um, the reason is how we feel. If we feel terrible, we relate terribly. If we feel really good, we relate really good. And we have all this ability to have patience um, and to uh, interact with people in a um, meaningful way, in a way that's not going to be... Um, uh, stabbing and wounding, um, and we're much more likely to be able to step back, even if somebody is stabbing and wounding us, and say, hmm, well, I feel really good, um, so you know what? Maybe this is how I'm going to address this, this situation. The um, way to feel really good, there's, I mean, there's spiritual, there's physical, there's mental, emotional, there's all these things, there's, there's our life beforehand, and things that people done to us, all this kind of stuff. I can tell you, the one thing Every human on the planet, if unless you're in like prison, um, and even then we got ways to handle this, is food. We can, especially in the United States of America, if you're, most people that watch these are from the United States of America. If we're in the United States of America, we have the opportunity, even if you are so poor, you still have the opportunity in the United States of America to choose the food item you want, you want to ingest. Um, I was at the store a couple nights ago, and um, I just happened to walk past the shopping cart and um, shop carts are in stores, right? <laughs> and this um, couple and their children were looking for this discounted item in the dairy aisle, and they're wondering where where do they keep the, the discounted items at? And I thought to myself, man, that kind of stinks. You know, they're I, I would that they're having to look for a discounted item, you know, and they aren't able to buy just you know the standard item there. Um, and then I just happened to look back at the shopping cart. I this happens to me often. And what I saw in the shopping cart was just um, like cheese puffs and this huge bag of mixed Dorito chips and uh, I don't know what they're called, Fritos. And I thought to myself, okay, this is the problem right there. We, we, we will stay in a state of basically physical debt that can lead to financial debt if we put in food that is full of debt, full of death and not promoting life. So no matter your state financially, that's, even if it's, it was three bucks for this massive bag of potato chips, who cares? That's $3 that we're wasting. You're never gonna get that three bucks back. You're never gonna get that three bucks back. So you might as well just save that $3 and save up so um, you know, if you wanted to buy a piece of meat instead, you can buy that piece of meat. Or you, know, you could buy 12 eggs. In fact, you can buy organic eggs at, um, you can buy 18, organic eggs at a place here where I live um, or nearby in Chehalis for uh, $4, 18 eggs. Um, pretty awesome, huh? So don't, um, do not let the idea that out of, out of money to buy good food ever get, don't let it get in front of you. You don't have, you, none of us have enough money to buy bad food. I can tell you that. I do not have enough money to buy Doritos. I, and I don't have enough money to buy Mountain Dew. I do not have enough money to buy, you know, ho hos and Reese's peanut butter cups and donuts and you know hot dogs. I do not have enough money. I don't. I do not have enough enough money to stop at, the, at a concession stand and get anything from it. I'm, you know, I would. I don't know how much money I need to have, but I would need to be richer than Bill Gates to have enough money to buy that kind of stuff. Because uh, you know, you cannot buy good health. There's once once your health goes. Even the, the most, I mean, I've, I've had patients that were literally billionaires who had made a billion, I had one patient who had made a billion dollars in a single year. Um, you know, that patient, um, one of the, 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 um, the husband um, actually passed away. You know, he literally could pay for anything, but his, his physical body was not able anymore. And there was no amount of money he could pay to, you know, get himself where he'd want to be. Um, which is likely alive today because he was, he was quite young. Um, so 
let's take the opportunity. We're all alive. Um, if you're on here, you can either hear or see and probably can walk. Um, so let's take the opportunity we have to infiltrate our bodies with this living food substance and just see, give the, give food an opportunity, living food, the opportunity to show up for you and see if it doesn't change, you know, how we think about things, how we, um, interact with people because, uh, how we feel is going to affect how we interact and, and how, and a way of making ourselves feel really good is by putting amazing food substances into our body. All right. Um, and one quick story I, uh, in high school, um, cause I was a sugar holic in high school, you know, ate just everything, deep dish pizzas and, uh, candy everywhere, soda pop all over the place. Anyways, I read this book, told the story many times, but I can remember, um, running lines in high school basketball practice and thinking, I am like, I'm so slow and I am getting so tired all the time. It's like, why am I so tired? I shouldn't be this tired. Um, and then, so I changed my, completely changed my diet, um, got rid of all the soda pop, all that kind of stuff. I can remember then in college playing basketball, which is like, it was like probably about a year and a half later. And um, even though all these guys I was playing college basketball with were stronger, they were more athletic, they were um, faster, you know, just um, via genetics, I would say. Um, when it came to running or, you know, like aerobic conditioning, I could outrun all of them. And I, I feel like I could just go forever. And the only thing I really changed, because I always liked playing basketball, working out, those kind of things, was I ate literally basically 180 degrees difference um, from the high school to the college um, basketball. So give it an opportunity. I dare you. Give it an opportunity. Put whole living real food in over and over and over again. Um, who cares if people around you aren't doing it? What's it matter? It's your body. It's my body. Um, I mean, I would feel embarrassed basically if I was putting junk in my body. It's like, why am I poisoning myself? Hey, Matt, why are you, why are you poisoning yourself? Um, wouldn't that be interesting if we were talking about that as opposed to um, why aren't you, why, aren't, why won't you eat the cake? Why won't you eat the Starburst? <laughs> um, so, uh, all right. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Um, hope somehow this is inspiring to you. And um, we get after this week. If you have any questions about a food item that you eat regularly and you're wondering, is this supporting my longevity, my ability to crush it at life and um, feel good, interact well with um, humanity, then please put it on here in the comments. I'll answer it. And um, look forward to seeing you guys next week. And ladies, talk to you later.